Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite real estate website for all things land passive income, wealth building, et cetera, et cetera, www.thelanegeek.com. And this morning, it's a beautiful morning. I am pleased, privileged, honored to rope back in the busiest man in real estate, Jaran Frazier. No clapping? I'm, no, I'm to not today, Mark. I'm just not in the mood. I just spent a ton of money buying playoff NBA playoff tickets. This is, this is okay. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship and owning a business because Duran is a consummate entrepreneur. He just told me an incredible story about Clippers playoff tickets. Duran, this is, this is, this is classic entrepreneurship one-on-one. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So I get an email this morning from, uh, actually it was yesterday from the Clippers and I've, I've been a part of their their little program of of buying tickets here and there. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm the kind of guy that I don't like to go to eight games. I like to go to one game and get one really, you know, get two really good seats and go with someone that really cares to go watch a good game. So, so generally speaking, I'll just, you know, I'm not going to go spend, you know, 150 bucks or 100 bucks on a ticket and go watch a basketball game. I'm going to spend four or 500 bucks and get a good seat. Well, I being the guy that I, you know, the guy that I am and and always on the list of getting. Good, good seat tickets. The Clippers emailed me uh, yesterday as part of their little like Clipper Club or Clipper Nation Club because I'm a big Clipper fan. Um, and I have, and I promise you, I have been for many years, Mark. People, and you know this, Mark, but many people laughed at me in the in the Danny in the Danny Manning era, in in the era when the Clippers were the absolute worst team ever in basketball. So, anyways, they're really good this they're really good this year, and uh, they were last year. And uh, so this morning, uh, I went online, logged in, had a special offer code. And I snagged tickets to five different playoff games, and all of them are in the first section, and they're all face value. So, uh, in theory, I'm only going to go to one game, right. um, and I'm going to sell all the other tickets. And I know it's so. You know, so you dropped about two grand, correct. but you're going to sell how much? What, how, what what kind of profit are you going to make on these tickets? I, I think I can make probably a good hundred to hundred fifty percent return. <laughs> it's, it's not bad for how much time did it take you? About six seven minutes. Okay, it's. It's a little better than maybe yeah. land. I mean, we, yeah. we, we make a better return, 300%, but yeah. it's a lot less work. It is a lot less work. So, to make so, 150%. And, yeah. and it, go, it goes back to one of the things that, that, that the land game taught me was to always kind of my, – my head is always on a swivel. And when I say that, like I, I'm not, I'm not a, an opportunist – in a, in a way that's going to hurt people or it's land. because you know what, someone else is going to buy the tickets and sell them. So I figure, you know, if they're going to make money, why not, you know, and I'm, I'm the kind of guy that if everyone priced their tickets at 700 bucks, I'll price mine at 400. Wait, wait a second. I mean, you're being like apologetic for, for one. Yes. I mean, wait, that, I, that, I, look I, at I, supply I, demand, supply I, demand. I, I, but you know what though? I, you're not taking advantage of anybody. That's the market. That's a capitalist. Yeah. Go to Europe, you socialist. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not a socialist. I just I'm one of those guys that look. And Mark, we've talked about this before, but Mark and I, when we got in the land game, we literally there were days where we felt unethical because we had months where we made a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a month. Yeah, so, it, when, when it, yeah, I know, I know. Our, we, yeah, margins, we did talk about that. Our margins were so ridiculous that it it, it, did, it did feel like you know. And Mark, as you know, Mark's not on you know unapologetic or apologetic at all. He doesn't care. He just wants to take your money. That's, for me, you're so funny. You are so <laughs> funny about that. Because you know what? I think you really think that. I, I I really do. I think you think that I'm just like I go to bed at night, and if I made you know ten thousand percent on a deal, it doesn't affect me at all. Of course it does. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a true story. Hold okay? on. Before you tell me a true story, when when anybody's face pops up in Mark's phone, there's a picture of a dollar sign, and that's just weird to me. Like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, I, all right. I, I, this this is a true story though because you know this is something that we've talked about on the mastermind yeah and um you were on this mastermind but maybe you were so we, we were talking about okay you know we're making a thousand percent or more on our note our land notes right 
-hmm. So I had a guy that he's, he's in the military and he's a bona fide hero, right? Mm -hmm. And he loses his job and he was paying $500 a month on a land note to me and at like 11% interest. So, and I was making... Mark, hold on. I'm going to get some tissue before you finish. Okay. He loses his job. He can't <laughs> afford the $500 a month. He'd already been paying in for five years, right? Yeah. So he's paid in thousands of dollars. And, you know, on these notes, the first few years are all towards interest. I mean, very little principal is paid down. So his wife is like, look, he's overseas and, you know, we're, we're in this predicament. What can you do? And... You know, a cold, hard businessman, a bank, for example, would just be like, look, you can't make your payments. We're taking the property back. Sorry. Right. So I yeah. completely revised the note and, uh, you know, I, I lowered their interest. I lowered their payment. He got a new job. They're happy. I'm happy. And, you know, those kinds of deals actually do kind of keep me up at night when, you know, good people hit hard times and they're going to lose their property in you know, I'll work with people like that. And when a hero comes along with the strength to carry I, on. I, whatever. Dude, you, 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 don't, you don't rework notes. You're just, you're just like, I'm foreclosing. Are you joking me, dude? Are you kidding me? I don't know. I've only foreclosed on people that actually go MIA. Like, I, I'm like, I call them. I email them. I mail them. I do everything known to man. In fact, I'm. If you need to find somebody, call me because I'm like the headhunter. Like I can find anybody in America in about five minutes on Google, um, and if if they're a real human being, um, right. and and if they're not, they're a recluse and they live on a piece of land somewhere, and you'll never find them. So I had some people that literally sent me a down payment um, of of fifteen hundred dollars. I gave them two years, two years to come find me. They had all my information, everything. I could not locate them anywhere. And eventually, yes, I did foreclose on the property and take it back. But that said, there are there are several people that have called me up and go, hey, Dr I cannot make the payments. What do I do? I said, we'll just defer it. How long do you need? Four months? Three months? I, I don't, you know, I'm I'm really, I'm, I'm the kind of person that doesn't want to take the property back. I feel that they're vested and I'm vested. And, and let's be honest, I don't want to take the property back and have to resell it anyway. So that's to make something work. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. And, um, you know, business is not always about profit, right? So profits, we need, I mean, it's just kind of a, it goes without saying, if we're not making a profit, we can't stay in business. But along the way, there's definitely opportunities to build relationships, give back. I think this podcast is paying it forward anyways. I mean, we give out tons of free information. I can't tell you how many how many people in uh, in this real estate business have, have urged me to charge for this podcast. I, well, you pay me, so I I can't really comment. Well, I can't afford you anymore. We're, that's that's something we're going to talk about <laughs> on the next podcast. Perfect. Why 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 we're, put, we're, we're doing a, we're doing a Kickstarter campaign to raise money to keep Trian on the podcast. Exactly, exactly. Perfect. We'll we'll probably raise five to ten dollars. I'm thinking. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you're dude. That's kind of pushing it. Maybe we'll have to see. All right, so let, let's talk about entrepreneurship for a little bit because we're talking about it's you know today in today's day and age. It's there's a lot of ways where it's easier than ever before to be an entrepreneur and own your own business, and in a lot of ways it's more challenging than it's ever been in history. So let's talk about that. What, yes. In what ways do you think? It's easier. Can we start? Can we start in reverse and go? What's harder? Yeah, let's I, talk about. Let's talk about what's, why it's harder. Okay. Um, so, I'm, I'm so fl I'm flexible like a yogi. Perfect. Um, and that is probably true, guys. Mark weighs about 113 pounds wet, maybe 114 after he finishes drinking whatever he's drinking right now. He's got Mark is literally, and I can see him on camera, folks. He's drinking eight different drinks. Um, like I don't know if it's like called this the health suicide or. I don't know what that thing's called, but it's uh, interesting. Um, yeah. You know, if you come to Vegas, you'll see what I really look like and, yeah. and how svelte I am. I may even take my shirt off <laughs> and, and, and show the six-pack. No, 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 no. Oh, man, that's terrible. <laughs> so anyways, uh, so, you know, entrepreneurship is, is very and, – and for me, I've had my hand in several aspects of entrepreneurship um, and even outside of land. So, so obviously from – 
oh, 2000, 99, 2000 to 2008 or nine, I was really you know, heavily involved in, in one, you know, one aspect of entrepreneurship, which was land. Um, and I didn't really delve outside because the margins were so good. Mark and I always went, gosh, we can't make better margins anywhere. And, and after the, the crash, I just, there was something in me that said, gosh, you know, I mean, I, you know, how long is this, is, am I, am I going to survive? Um, we still had a lot of debt. We still had a lot of land, but at the same time, Mark and I were creative enough and we had paid enough debt down that we could, we knew we could figure out solutions to market our land and still make, you know, really significant returns. Right. But that's, but that said, um, in 08 or 09, I really started learning. I wanted to learn every aspect. And I've talked about this before from sort of from A to Z, how to start a company. So I learned the internet. I learned how to build sites on WordPress. I, I learned, you know, I, I had learned some coding and development stuff coming out of college. So I kind of knew that. And then I wanted to learn legal aspects, how to form a corporation. And of course, now it's really simple, right? Form a corp. You go to rocketlawyer.com, legalzoom.com. You pay them 39 bucks a month uh, to get legal advice. And then you pay 300 bucks or whatever to file. Um, to file an LLC or a corporation, S corp, C corp, whatever it is. Um, those are easy, right? Th this, th those are really simple to do. Um, the problem is, is the expense involved in everything you do. And then, and then it's almost like the government sort of learned how every business works in America and they squeeze the margins as much as they possibly can. Right. So, so if you're selling real estate um, and you're a broker or a realtor, the fees go higher and higher. The real, the like to, to be a realtor, for example, um, you have to pay whatever it is, five hundred to six hundred bucks a year in, in in different states. I don't know what the fees are. Then you have your you know your fees for the MLS and for the keys and everything it is that it costs to be an agent. Well, you got to go sell a few homes a year to make that make sense, especially if you're outside of a high demand area that and and home values that are 500 grand or more if you're selling homes that are 100 grand or 200 grand as a realtor that eats into your margins really quickly so you're looking at basically you know on your first couple of deals 25% goes back to, to all the expenses involved in in maintaining and setting up everything to be an agent so right. those those are the and, – and, and that's every industry. And the government's figured out a way to sort of squeeze those margins and get it because they know, hey, you have to pay it to be there. And, and if you're going to work hard it, – you know, it's kind of like, you know, it, like a, a system like Marx, like the Land Geek. If you go in and you put the time in, you're going to make real money. But yeah, if yeah, you but, yeah, but more importantly than that though, I don't want people buying themselves a job. That's not you – know, like for example, like, you're like a real estate agent, that's a job. That's yeah. not being – that's not owning a business. A business no, I, should be able to run without you being there. Totally agree. Totally agree. And all I'm saying is that it, there's a um, that that there's a it, and that, and we're going to get into. I'm talking about the bad aspects. I'm not talking about the good aspects, Mark. I'm I'm not there oh, yet. Oh, so right, right. Okay. I'm, yeah, we're, we're I'm talking about bad aspects. Okay. I'm I'm still I'm still discussing like how how we um, can you know how we can focus on like getting outside the realm and land is that right now to me in my mind the only place where we can kind of focus and, and there's a lot of good things that can happen. So, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you take, let's, let's take a typical business, right? <laughs> and you, you're like, a, a st let, let's just look at a, at a franchise model, if you will. Right. So for $250,000, you could buy a subway, right? Yeah. So really what you're buying, the only reason to buy a franchise like that instead of starting Duran's sandwich shop is that you've already got the brand, you already know the business model works, right? They provide the advertising for you and you just go in and you hire kids and they have the processes all set up. So franchises are, are great. And really that's what you're kind of getting when you invest in the investor's toolkit with me is like the land geek franchise in a way because it, it's tells you from A to Z this blueprint on how to do this. But what I see happening when people buy Subway franchises is they start making sandwiches for themselves 8 to 12 hours a day. Yeah. And they're working in the business and not on the business. And uh, it's that's not really what it, you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, right? there's, a, there's, a, there's a guy down the street from me uh, who owns a UPS store. And, and we talk about this all the time and I always kind of try to give my ideas as to how to like sort of how to work on the business, not in the business. And, um, the poor guy, like he busts his butt. He's in there from, you know, 7 AM to 6 PM, 11 hours a day, five days a week. He's got three or four employees, 
but basically what happened was he he's paying this is no joke i think like like over five dollars a square foot for oh his space gosh. okay the poor guy is being squeezed by the commercial developer that runs the complex and by the franchise fees with ups and unfortunately a lot of these systems are really hard to get away from you can't go hey okay cool i'm gonna go down the street because you know what you're in that specific center because the traffic's there and the business is there so so going back to 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 you know entrepreneurship it just all i'm saying is that it is so challenging today more than ever to be an entrepreneur and they really are squeezing us middle class people and when i say middle class i am certainly in that middle class bracket i'm not a suit i mean i'm Drew, not a come on man dude are what you a, okay fine you're middle class I'll, okay. I'll, I'll i'll trade houses with you right now middle okay. class beach goer okay uh, you know what's what the, what's all, right. The, all right Tram, people okay. don't live like you who are middle class all right, I'm, I'm, you know what, me, I hang out with the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. Yes, I'm, I'm an elite, let me tell you. Well, um, whatever. <laughs> Fine. You're anyway, middle class. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I, maybe I live like middle class. How do you like that, Mark? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Fine. I'm, I'm, uh, you, you're, I, you're, yeah, you and your country club cronies at, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're all, you're all middle class at La Costa. You get, you get, and Deepak Chopra at the spa can you, complain about the government and how much you got to pay in taxes each year. You, you get you know, you, you're getting really squeezed from both sides, you poor guy. Yeah, I am I, playing right now the smallest violin. Perfect, for you. perfect. You know, I will say, last night I was at La Costa with my wife, and uh, and we were sitting there. And all these people came in and they had their badges on, and I said, well, you know, what are you guys up to? And and the, the lady said, oh, we we're all with CAA, which is like a they're they're a big agency. For, yeah, I, I know CAA in, in in Hollywood. Yeah, and so they're a big agency. They're all over the country, and and they're they, these were specific to like PGA Tour. And uh, started wrapping out with these people, but this is interesting. The, the people that come through that resort, and just so you all know, folks, I don't pay a ton of money to be a part of La Costa. But anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. So um, they give me a free membership because I, I won't leave it. I won't leave the place. They like, dude, just we'll give you membership. Just leave us alone. Um, so, Mark, you know, I, I think going back to, I think the hardest aspect of entrepreneurship is the cost involved to get there and the time and effort people put in. So the now transitioning into what's so amazing about land is that there's land everywhere. There's there's plenty of people that are desperate to get out of it. And there's plenty of deals to be had because there's no real infrastructure in place to put a piece of land up and sell it. When land hubs there, I'm gonna change everybody's world. But I'm I'm just I'm teasing. But right. what I what I what I think now is that that's one industry where it's so there's there's land everywhere. And what you think the demand is for a piece of land could ultimately change in a year or two, right? There could be an, all of a sudden the government goes, hey, we're going to put in a new freeway from, from Mexico to Canada and we need your property. And, you know, it, it, you know, it, there's just things that they're, you know, hey, we're putting a new roadway in here. We need to buy your property. We're, we want to do a, a subdivision. Uh, you know, we want your properties involved in the subdivision. So all these different things can happen. Um, and all these things you can sort of force, you know, foresee at some level by by doing a little bit of research hey there's a, you know there's a, there's a mineral boom and this specific area has minerals and this property has mineral rights i want to acquire it you know through a through mark's program whatever you whatever you do it's just there's so much there's uh there, there's so there's so many w ways for land to evolve and to become valuable well the best thing about this business honestly is that it's the ideal business you don't have physical inventory yeah. right you can do it from anywhere you don't have to rent office space. Like, look at your UPS neighbor. He's got to have office space. He has to have, a, you know, it's all physical. Yeah. This is all digital. Yeah. And, you know, unlike housing, where you got to have maintenance, you got tenants and toilets and trash and termites and all these headaches, land is so simple in the, in the sense that you can't destroy it. Yeah. Right? You don't have to maintain it. It's, it's not physical. It's all, you know, it's a piece of paper, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, think about it. How many other businesses can boast, hey, I can sell this thing one time and then keep getting recurring revenue over and over again for something that isn't physical? So you've got software, but software takes a lot of maintenance, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can look at like the Microsoft model or, you know, all these subscription models that are software. Well, they've got to constantly keep innovating. Well, to constantly keep innovating, you've got to hire engineers, right? You've got to have marketing. You've got to have sales. And you've got to have all these pieces in place. So it's very capital intensive. 
I mean, yeah. e- even GoDaddy, what a great business. Yeah. Phenomenal business, right? Yeah. But man, is that thing capital intensive. Where it land, heck, we, we can control thousands of acres with no money down, locking it up on an option. I honestly, except for maybe life insurance, I can't think of a better business model. Can you? I, I really can't, to be honest with you, Mark. Yeah, I mean, life insurance is phenomenal because there's no cost. It's just, it's an idea, right? Yeah. But that being said, nobody wants to sell life insurance. It's not fun. Land is fun. I, I, you know, funny, I have, I have a, a couple of my buddies. So they, I actually became friends because they're my, um, because they're my life insurance salesmen. Um, you know, they, they came to me and, and uh, approached me and I bought life insurance about seven years ago when I had my first child. Um, and, uh, you know, it's weird because my wife, I, I, like literally, I think every morning when I go, you know, drink my coffee, I look in there for like a little pill or something. Like maybe the kids have tried to poison me or my wife. You know, just they, they want my, <laughs> Money, money, but um, I'm just teasing. Yeah. But um, but you know that's an, it is an interesting business. I mean, you, you're, it's a hustle for sure. It's a lot different hustle than it is selling land. And land's not really a hustle, right? Land sells itself. So well, it, it it sells itself, but you do have to, to market it. Yeah, you do have to market. I mean, you just can't buy it. And no, then, I, you know. But so. hold on, that's they, that's not true though. You well, can buy a piece of land. I've had people call me that I don't even have listed property and say I want to buy your land because they well, need yeah, it. they need it to the neighbors. Correct. So, yeah. so that that is uh, that is a reality. But you know, going back to it, like Mark said, it is really, really, um, really neat to be you know an entrepreneur, and and you don't have to be like we, we talked about before. Don't have to be full time doing it. Uh, it's kind of a you know it can be a side role, it can be a full time, whatever you want. You, it is you can make it whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I mean the yeah the great thing about this business is it's exactly you get out of it exactly what you put into it. So if you want it to be huge then yeah you just got to work at it harder hustle make more offers if you yeah. just want to do it part-time you can continue making offers part-time and pop you know a couple deals a month yeah. and you know make yourself six figures it doesn't it doesn't matter it just depends what you want to do with it and and how you want to do it if you want to have this huge note portfolio and just have this passive income machine you can do that if you want to just do flips yeah. and you just want extra money coming in you can do that. You can do both. Yeah. So it's it really gives you a lot of flexibility. And again, it doesn't take hundreds of thousands of dollars to to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, if you want to buy a Subway franchise to make less money and work harder, what's that, like $250,000 to start? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's probably something like that. Something like that. I, yeah, I, don't know, I, I don't know why I'm picking on Subway, but... Yeah, it's, you know, well, Subway's a great franchise. Let's it, be is, honest. It, is, it is a great franchise. Five dollar footlongs? Are you kidding me? I mean, what are those made of? Like rubber? They have to be. That's that's true. <laughs> that's true. So, but you know, in general, though, owning your own business is very tough. I mean, what's the uh, the old saying? I quit my forty hour a week job to own my own business to work eighty hours a week. Yep. So typically, you know, most entrepreneurs when they get started. They've got to work really, really hard to launch their product or service. And it's, it's tough. It really is tough. Yeah. And especially in a global economy. And there's so many things at work at it. But, you know, ultimately business is broken down into what five pieces, right? Marketing, selling, accounting. Uh, that's three, Mark. That's three. What are the others? All I know is you read way too many yeah. books. I would, I would. Yeah, never- yeah. You know, you know, my my tip of the week is going to be. That's right. It's going to be a website, but also check out personalmba.com. I love that site. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of stuff on entrepreneurship and business. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, you want to get into our tip of the week, Mark? Well, we're we still have some time. I mean, we don't. I mean, we're we, running out of time here. Not really. We, we still have five minutes. Yeah, five. I mean, well, you're you're probably going to talk at least two about your about your tip of the week. All and right, I, all right, I, fine. You want you want to you want to go to the tip of the week? I, I, you know what? It just kind of rubs me the wrong way when you're the one that brings up tip of the week. It's my podcast. You brought it I, up. I want to be the one to bring up tip of the week. You. I want to be up. the one that says, Duran. I want to put you on the spot. It's that time. What is your tip of the week? Can't I just lead this? You want to go ahead and do that right now? I think you have control issues. 
I do, 100%. I'm, but you know what's great about me is I admit that I have so many faults, but, <laughs> but I just don't know how to fix them. All right. You know what? Before, before we get to the tip of the week, I do yeah. want to remind everybody, May 30th, 31st, we have a block of rooms reserved. Get in your room now. So get there Thursday night, the 29th, because we're starting bright and early on the 30th, Friday morning. We're going from 9 to past 5. There will be the open bar, and it's going to be amazing. We are going to go over just everything with the Investor's Toolkit. We're going to break down due diligence. We're going to break down deal flow. We're going to break down marketing, right? We're going to break down management. We're going to break down pricing strategies. We're going to break down copywriting. We're going to have mindset sessions. We're going to have networking sessions. We're going to have Q&A. Duran's going to be there. I'm not. I'm actually got booked uh, already for a, a very, very large conference. Um, and they actually decided to pay me. I, your fee mark was 25 grand to speak, but I'm just going to tell you right now, these guys just upped the ante 50 G. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and it, just to let the listeners know as well, if I, if that happens to cancel, um, which would be probably a tornado or a flood would cause that to cancel, um, <laughs> that, uh, I will, I will be there in May, but I Jaran think is going to be there. He's I just think, joking. It's but gonna I think be great. It, we're going to, we're going to, we're going we're gonna to have mastermind sessions. It's going to be fantastic. You guys, you know, I, Mark, have you got a website up to, to register at this point or, or how does it work? I'm, I, I'm working on that. I will. In fact, uh, we just, we literally just signed the contracts and there's going to be a link I'm going to send everybody so they can book their room. I'm going to have, uh, my assistant Michelle get on the phone with people and get their flight information. So we have a really good, uh, you know, Assist Hold on, assistant, assistant. Yeah. You're a big deal, bro. You're such a big deal. It's crazy. I have to have them, man. All right. Wow. So now we're at that time. Vegas, baby, Vegas. All right. Tip of the week. What's your tip of the week? Okay. So I actually, you know, funny, we talk entrepreneurship. So it's not going to be, we're, you know, sometimes we kind of, we kind of run off the beaten path. I'm really good at that actually, like going off the wrong path. And we're, we're like, we're talking about something and I, and I just go off on a tangent. Um, so this is kind of one of those little tangent tip of the weeks. Um, I, there's a really cool site and it, and it kind of, if you like to learn about technology or where technology is going, there's a website called Angel dot co a n g e l dot co angel dot co i'm and gonna check it out right now it's called angel list and basically what it is is it's all these ideas of people coming up with softwares and concepts and funny enough i haven't put land up land hub up there but i'm going to eventually when i get all my all my my ducks in a row um to raise capital and when we start scaling and raising larger capital and going to you know series a and larger rounds i will do that but uh, it's really neat because you can kind of see like you can type in real estate see what comes up on a real estate and see where things are going Right. Uh, so, and, and, and that leads me into, um, a couple of cool different websites. One, one is that that's from, from there. It's called, actually, I don't know if they're on there, but it's called, um, high rise. Um, and oh, high -rise, I've talked about high rise. So high rise, I don't know. They just, they're just now put a site up. It's high. This, H -I this, this, yeah. The CRM. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of something else. You are. Um, and that's okay. I completely forgive you, Mark. Okay, nice. so high high rise it's actually high rise launch dot com. Oh and, no no no, I don't know this one. Okay, it, sorry. It's all right. H I R I S E and then launch L A U N C H all one word. H R I S E launch dot com. Dot com. It, it's it's basically the Airbnb of commercial real estate. And if you guys haven't been to Airbnb, it's really cool. Another really cool website, A I R B the letter B, the letter N, N is in Nancy, and the letter B is in boy. So, so uh, airboynancyboy.com, that's a really cool website. But, but High Rise Launch basically is a commercial platform that, that is maximizing commercial real estate space. Um, and eventually land, and I'm going to, I swear, Mark, as my platform evolves, and I talked to my developers this morning, we're working on some, uh, you know, phase two of the platform. But basically, there, there are all these these new crazy software applications and, and cloud based platforms that are allowing people to to go in and and maximize efficiency with commercial real estate. There's so many empty spaces, so that this company's created a, a patented technology, or they're working. I think it's patent pending technology to basically take free space and figure out a way to utilize it. Because yeah. I, I would have an office like Mark and I would go get an office if I knew, even if it was temporary for four months, but the guy just wanted two fifty to fill the space. You know what right. I mean? And, and it was plug and play. I had computers there. I could drop my, you know, have my computer, but I had, 
you know, I had cubicles, I could hire my employees and I would go, I would, I, I, you know, for me, I like change. I'd almost go office to office every four months just to, just to change, you know? Um, right. but this platform would allow something like that. Really cool. High rise launch.com. You put your email, you can see what it does. Yeah, Drew, Drew, this hasn't even launched yet. I this know. This is launching but, in, in May, 2014, but I, I will tell you that as far as, I mean, we could do this now. I mean, this is actually something we'll talk about in Vegas, but there's all different creative ways besides, you know, land flipping and just putting a note on your property to, to gain income from your property. This could be one other avenue, but that's something that we, we're definitely going to have, like, we're going to talk about for like an hour is just different ways to have income opportunities with your raw land and, and be creative with it. So book Vegas book Vegas. Uh, call the uh, the office 888-620-6742 and we'll call you back and we'll get you all set up. So, uh, or you can always email us as well. Okay. So I like these, uh, I, I really like these uh, tips of the week. So my tip of the week is going to be personalmba.com. And I also had a site that I thought was really cool. Sometimes people need to send me very, very private information online. We need to get social security numbers for sending out 1098s at the end of the year, right? So I, if, if someone doesn't want to just call me and leave that information on and they want to send it online, any kind of secure information online in today's day and age, obviously we know everyone's watching. So the best way that I found to send it is a site called securesha.re secure secure.re check it out and encrypts your files you just upload it they don't see it and but the government does well i'm sure 100%. i'm sure someone i'm sure someone in the nsa is cracking them right now but yes. wh whatever but th this this is pretty secure okay pretty secure i like mark you, see, you guys see how politically correct that was it was pretty it's pretty secure it's it's secure all like, right listen <laughs> i know i know duran's got to go uh duran landhub.com check them out go to reserveland.com buy some wholesale don't go to land for him don't go to reserve land because you know what I, I i just haven't to be honest with you folks i haven't updated it in a little while and i'll tell you why because i am trying to find the employee to help me get that get caught up on that on that aspect but don't go to reserve land go to landhub.com list your property there find some more land on landhub.com because there's plenty of it if you can't find land on landhub.com, always go to, is it Frontier Properties? FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Uh, and don't I, forget, download the Passive Income Blueprint at www.thelandgeek.com and get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, you can listen to Duran and I argue once a week on this podcast. So we'll email you the po podcast as well each week. Duran Frazier, my poor middle class friend, living off the beach in Carlsbad. Are you gonna go surf today? You know what? I got I told you I got stitches in my back, Mark, so no. Oh good. I, okay. You know, well, I, I'm I'm still playing that, that small violin for you. Thanks so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy day to of, rela uh, of relaxing. Of relaxing. Of, re of relaxing. I'm sure you're gonna probably go play basketball now or something. I, I'm on my way to bed play basketball, yes. <laughs> 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 all right, next week, let's update everybody on, on what you sold those tickets for. Okay, perfect. And, uh, all right, man. Hey, thanks. I'll talk to you uh, later. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.